Picture a small plane flying over the ocean. Halfway across, the captain announces, I've got bad news and I've got good news. The bad news is that the gauges aren't working. We're hopelessly lost. I have no idea how fast we're flying or in what direction. And I don't know how much fuel, fuel we have left. The good news is that we're making great time. Does that sound at all familiar? That's how many entrepreneurs run their businesses. They're flying blind with no data to let them gauge where they're where they are, where they're going, or if they're heading in the right direction. But they always remain optimistic. In this video, I'm going to show you how to formulate and manage your data to let you take the pulse of your business consistently and accurately so that you can take effective action when it's required. According to an old business maxim, anything that is measured and watched is improved. And the concept of managing through a scorecard has been around for a long time. The idea has been expressed in many different terms, be it called a dashboard, flash report, scoreboard, metrics, KPIs, measurables, smart numbers, and so on. Whatever you call it, it's a handful of numbers that can tell you at a glance how your business is doing. Welcome to Summit Scale, where entrepreneurial leaders come to learn how to grow their businesses into mid-sized companies. The ultimate reality is that most organizations don't have a scorecard. They lack activity-based numbers to review on a regular basis. They might rely on P&L, profit and loss statement, to tell them the score, but it's, then it's too late to make corrections. A profit and loss statement is a trailing or lagging indicator. Its data comes after the fact, and you can't change the past. With a scorecard, however, you can change the future. The key, of course, is to create a scorecard that fits your unique business. Start with deciding on a set of numbers that will allow you to have an absolute pulse on your business. These measurables should include items such as weekly revenue, cash balances, weekly sales activity, customer complaints, accounts receivable, and client project or production status, to name a few. As a rule of thumb, you should end up with five to 15 numbers, hopefully closer to five. There is such a thing as too much information, so keep it simple. Once you've identified all the measurables, you then plug them into a simple spreadsheet format. The numbers on the scorecard should be weekly activity-based numbers, not the type of high-level numbers you see in a P&L statement. So for example, one measurable is typically new sales revenue. If you only monitor revenue as it comes in, you'll react to downsides too late. But if you look at your sales process and follow the steps as far back as you can, typically you'll find that each step can be measured with a number. Take them in order, starting with the first step. Measure the number of leads generated, the number of contacts, the number of appointments, the number of proposals, and the number of closes. You decide how far back you want to measure because you can chase the process all the way back to the first step. Say, for instance, you choose number of leads generated and that track that number in the scorecard. By knowing the number of leads you have, you can see how many of the leads turn into contacts, how many contacts turn into appointments, and so on. By understanding these formulas and the ratios, you will be able to predict the number of closes, two, three, and sometimes four months down the road. This ultimately gives you the ability to predict and tells you how many leads you need to develop today. Decide who's accountable for collecting the numbers and filling in the scorecard each week for you and your team to review. And then start using it. You need to review your scorecard every week to ensure that you're on track for your plan. Your scorecard will evolve over the next several months. Assuming you've taken a good cut this first cut, your scorecard should be about 85% right. This is close enough at this point. As your scorecard is brought to life in the succeeding months, it will evolve to 100%. On average, it will take about three months and it took till it really evolves into something you really find useful. I'm Shane Spears. See you next time.